business card. So I'm just I'm just sitting there trying to process all this yeah, stuff yeah. that just happened. I went out, I sat in my car, and I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, over all of this, I was gonna kill myself, mm -hmm. you know, over this. And and it's like when I drove off, I saw a marquee that said, Your debt is paid in full. That's what it said. And I'm looking at it. I mean, I just got God. I just got joy. I yeah. just got all this coming all over me. And I'm like, okay, Lord. It said I got that letter and the judge it said, you know, your case is dismissed. And they can no longer that particular uh, you know, can no longer sue you. Wow. <laughs> so I'm sitting here like Hey, and welcome to Winning Conversations. We are so glad you're here. We are back again this week with Dolores and Arnold as Alanis. I said it right? Yeah, Alanis. Alanis. Yes. Alanis. How are y'all today? Yes, doing We're wonderful. Yes. Awesome. How are you, Andy? Good? Good. It's a Good. beautiful day. Yes. Yay. It is. It is. We had such a great time talking about, mm -hmm. mainly about your story last, yes. last episode. And um, it's so powerful. I would encourage anybody to go back and watch it if you didn't get a chance to before, because it kind of provides some context to where we're going today. But we are excited to kind of explore your story together because awesome. you guys are newlyweds, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. Um, <laughs> Cute. So how long again have y'all been married? We're going on two years in May. Two this years year. in yes. May. So yes. cute. Aww. Yes, yes, yes. And I had to learn how to do this no. here. Hold, Hold hands. Yeah. Yes, because, I mean, you know, being, I, I would think when he started, that's his love language. Is really physical hands. touch, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so, and that not mine. Yes. It was not mine. And so, it's like, does he not know? <laughs> does he not know how old we are? And he wants to hold my hand all the. But time. But that's so cute. I'm used to it now. Yeah, so I like it. So I'm, I'm expecting it. But you had to get used begin, to I had it. To learn it. Yeah, it to funny? receive it. That God it. puts two people with two different love languages together. I almost yeah. feel like it's intentional. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we just we just did the love language quiz. Is uh, that right? Me, Ryan, and Addie. Yeah. Oh. So we could learn like yes. what each other needs yeah. and everything like that. Yeah. Physical touch is both at the very bottom. Oh. Like, thank God. Yeah. I would, it's very bottom. But I think <clears throat> gifts is mine and acts of service. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It's good. But it's good to know. You have to. You have to know. Yes, and, Which and like I said, needs. especially at this age, you know, you get adjusted to certain ways of oh, doing yeah. it. Well, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah, so praise yes. the Lord. Yes. Uh, I'm learning yeah. to receive. <laughs> Y'all got married late in life. Yes. So how has it been melding your lives together? It's been good. It's been interesting. Never a dull moment. I always say that. <laughs> Never a dull moment. You know, he's, he's a lot of, he's fun. And we've had moments, of course, of, and I've learned because, of course, I was married 26 years, my first marriage, and, and it was a lot of fighting, a lot of yelling, mm -hmm. a lot of cursing, things of that nature. But now with him, he's very quiet, he's patient, and so I'm, I've embraced that. And mm -hmm. I've learned, again, to receive, because receiving is not, you know, it, it's everything in life, you know. And so I'm just, I'm grateful for, because, again, I've learned to take correction, you know. And even my daughter even told me, you know, uh, Mom... It sure must have been tough for you to let go of the reins and let somebody take over. Yeah. Because I was always the leader in my home. Independent. You know, very fiercely independent. Mm -hmm. You know, and I grew up like that and I stayed like that and I remained like that in the, the first marriage. So when he came along, I had to start, and I'm still learning, yeah. to let him take the lead. Let him take the lead. And he doesn't force it. He, he just gently, you know, patiently and with love. And with love. And I'm, I work on that and, and with God's help, you know. Oh, yeah. Sure. And Holy Spirit reminds me. Because, you know, even before we got married, <laughs> I said, okay, Lord, if there's anything about this man you need to reveal and expose, you know, show me or expose it, you know, I don't want to go into, you know, I want to go into this marriage, eyes wide open and, and whatnot, mm -hmm. right? Especially finding out. Because when I found out he had just come out of prison, that's the way, my you know, my sister-in-law now, she's the one that told me, Oh, you should. And she was handing me her phone. We were all out eating. She was right across from me. You should, 
meet my brother-in-law. He just got out of prison. She was fixing to show oh. me his picture. And the same way, like, she handed me the phone, yeah. I gave it right back to her. <laughs> oh, nice. I'm like, oh, great. You know, I'm just like, I'm not good at making this relationship, you yeah, know, a I, good relationship, you know. And so I'm like, oh, great, <laughs> you know. But anyway. Um, I mean, I can imagine having some concerns. I yeah, mean, yeah. Totally. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. I think what what it was, and when I first got saved, all the, the, the I was Sunday school teacher to his nieces and nephews and and his i knew his brother i knew his sisters mm -hmm. so i knew a lot of his family but so you I, didn't know him i mm -hmm. didn't know him i never knew he existed oh my goodness yeah until you know he got out of prison and that's when you know they introduced him to me so we met through facebook and um messenger i guess we became facebook friends and we just started chatting he slid in your dms yeah girl yeah <laughs> he just kind of how to learn facebook <laughs> <laughs> what is this <laughs> social media yeah, stuff yeah they don't have that in prison oh today. my goodness <laughs> <laughs> yep and so yeah and so we you know and he told me he sent me a message you know what well, we'll go out to dinner sometime and whatnot this was in 2019 mm -hmm. well y'all know 2020 COVID. oh hit. yeah and that's when he came into my life, right, when COVID hit. And so he comes. He says, I want to take you out to dinner. I said, oh, that's really slick. Everything's closed. <laughs> you know, that's like you want to take me out to dinner, you know. She had to go to her home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but we, you know, we we met. We hit it off well. And I do think you said that, that the Lord, you already felt I was going to be your future wife. Mm -hmm. And I would always. What, how did, wait, how did you take that? Well, I, didn't he know. didn't tell me. Oh, okay, okay. He told me afterwards. Because could you imagine on a first no. date, the Lord yeah. told me that we're going to be married. <laughs> no, I'd be like, God. red flag, <laughs> red flag right there. Yeah, no, oh, thank you. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. No, but it's, you know, he, he, we started talking and I started hearing his story. And when I found out he had been in prison, I said, you don't look like you've been in prison. Mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't at all, at all, at all. But, um, and I was, you know, I did share with Tanya earlier about, I had uh, prayed when I meet somebody, I want to meet somebody take, that leads me to God, not away from God, mm -hmm. right? Because it's like in other relationships, you meet people, and then the minute you start talking about the Lord or any that type of, you know, that's like a turn off to other people, right. right? And so, oh, yeah, I know God, but I would hear inside, I don't know him. You know, so that was like, oh, man, again, you know, and again. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I finally had to let go of everything, you know, because like I was originally saying, you know, Cindy, mom, it must be hard for you to let go of the reins and let somebody take over. You know, mm -hmm. that's what I had to do even with God. I said, Lord, you know what? I love you. And if I don't meet anybody, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I'm blessed. I'm very I'm in a, a peaceful place with God. I don't need to find my happiness in a man or anything like that. Well, you know, and then he here he comes <laughs> along, you know, and, and mm -hmm. okay, Lord, so, I mean, what, what do you got to say? But it was good. It was good. And I, I saw him, and he was real. Yeah. He wasn't just talking the talk. He was walking the walk. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was seeing that, and I was seeing the hand of God in his life, and I was learning things that, you know, I would hear about, and I would hear in other, you know, people. So I, I believe that's where restoration started to take place in my personal life. Mm -hmm. You know, because I, I, I still, even though I had been serving the Lord, I got saved when I was 25 years old. That was 30, uh, 30, what, two years ago, 33 years ago. So I, you know, had a lot of issues. And so, you know, just like anybody else, you sure. need the healing, you need yeah. restoration yeah. in different areas. Mm -hmm. And so, and even in coming to this church, I was learning to how to trust in the word, mm -hmm. how to use the word, how to, you know, allow the word to do what it needed to do, you know, and be patient as yeah. well. That was the toughest. That was hard. But again, with him coming along and him, you know, um, helping me, you know, when we decided to get married, we had, at first we decided we were going to just elope, you know, we're just going to do a simple. Some small, yeah. You know? some small. But his family started inviting themselves to when they found <laughs> out. They were inviting themselves. Like, well, surprised. let me know when is the wedding? You know, it's like, uh, and I told her, we never said there was going to be a wedding. Yeah. I was like, you know, he says, well, they're just the having... wedding is for everybody else, <laughs> yeah. not you. Yeah. And it's like, well, he says, well, it's my first marriage. So at this age, they're excited for yeah. me, you know? Yeah. And it like, is exciting. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, and he, uh, he mentioned to me, he said, well, secretly, I really wanted a wedding. And, oh. you know, <laughs> that's so sweet. But he just didn't yeah. say anything. He yeah. was about, you know, what you wanted, what I wanted. And yeah. so we finally just started to, 
plan a little bit at a time and it just kept growing and growing. I said, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> he says, well, just tell him no. I said, they're, no, those are my new in-laws. You yeah, tell you them tell no. Them no. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, they can't, they can't come. We're, we're yeah. full. Yeah. <laughs> But how, how has marriage been for you and the growth that you've had since you guys got together? It's like, it's awesome. <laughs> because <laughs> one thing that I've yes. learned is, is that you become one. Yeah. That's the main thing. It's not about her. You know, the, the cliche, you know, my money is my money. Her money is her money. <laughs> and then they say, you know, my money is her money, and her money is her money. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, no, it's it's our money. It's our relationship. We're one. Yeah. You know, and it's about us. It's not about s- separation or, or division. No. Mm-hmm. That's why I, I just like to say, you know, I'm I'm happily I'm happily married. <laughs> I'm very happy. Yeah. And she's a beautiful woman. Mm-hmm. And she's always been in my sight. Mm-hmm. And I remember when she when I was we first started. Uh, kind of dating and and she did have some issues you know and so I would I would say look you are joy you are love mm-hmm. you are peace you are happiness this is you this is what you are because she didn't see that in herself right I said, this is what I see this is what God sees in you and I, and they, I, even, I even wrote it down and put it in her mirror mm-hmm. where she can I, I wrote <laughs> my name is Dolores I am the daughter of God, and I am love. I am peace. I am joy. I am intelligent. I am beautiful. I just add it just mm-hmm. because that's what she is, you know. And and then God yeah. helped me mm-hmm. to get that restoration mm-hmm. through that. Mm-hmm. And then I told him, he's he, I've got blessed. I got a handyman because he came to help mm-hmm. me get a, a ten year dream of remodeling all my house, you know. And it looks awesome, you know. We've done a good job, and we did a lot of the work, and so it's been amazing. It's been a, awesome. a transition. It, I told him, I said, "What we've done, and I've known him for three years, but we got married two years ago. Mm-hmm. It's been like, like, uh, you know, certain dreams coming true. Right? It's like happening. It's moving. It's moving. Mm-hmm. It's moving. Like, things that maybe you forgot mm-hmm. about, or things that yeah. you didn't even like, you weren't right. even focusing on. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 And so it is just like, man, wow. And, and, the, and the thing about it is, is you see us now like this, but we have background history. Right. And that's what I was going to ask: is that mm-hmm. I, you have a colorful background, mm-hmm. and <laughs> yes. you as well you kind of have the same kind of thing and then coming together, mm-hmm. can you kind of share about the things that you went through and your yeah, history? Absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that the the hardest part, you know, I, I did go through a lot of abuse. So I went, you know, as a child and, and growing up in a violent home. So I saw so many things and I mentally, you know, I was the oldest in my family. I, I had already made up my mind. I will never um, get with a man that's going to beat me it's going to treat me this way. It's going to just, leave, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And so I had already, you know, but, and then, but, and, you know, my mother was, was a little unst- was unst- unstable. So mm-hmm. she moved a lot. So we ended up in different people's homes. So that caused other abuse to happen to us. So I became very suicidal. Mm-hmm. You know, I started to grow up like that. I started, you know, I, I attempted to overdose on pills I, I've been pumped out before, and I, you know, I've been, and all that would happen to me was the same way, like he would, mm-hmm. it was talking in his story, you know, you just feel like, eh, you're just going to die. Death always sounded good to me. That was my way out. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though I, I drank, I got involved in drugs, not as heavy as he did, but I still got involved in certain things, and, and I wasn't, you know, I was just, I felt like, why, are, what's the purpose of even, even being here? Mm-hmm. You know, because of my rebellion and not wanting to follow anybody's rules, I couldn't, as a teenager growing up, I couldn't, nobody wanted me under their roof. So it's like I could stay there for a little bit, but then next, you know, you got to go, you got to go. So, and there was times I slept in my car. I had nowhere to go. And so, but, you know, and growing up with that lifestyle and that cycle, you just keep going. You're just living life. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm, I'm working for the weekend, you know, yeah, I love that song, you know, yeah, that's me, <laughs> you know, whatever. But. 
you know, you, you, you get to a point in your life. And then of course I got married. I got married young and I got married because I lived with him first. And my mother, you're going to hell because you're living with that man. You know, it's like, okay. So, so we, you got married drunk, him. we got drunk and we got married. Yeah. You know, and so we, you know, in that, that was order. in that order pretty much. And that was our life. Just yeah. drinking. Right. And, and, you know, I can remember one night we were arguing and I went and grabbed a knife and you know, I was going to go at him, but I ended up putting it on my stomach right here. So I was, yeah, and, he, and then he put his body on it. You know, that that those are the times that you say that's when you know that God's watching over you. You don't know, but you learn that yes. later on in life. Yes. So he put his body on it, and I had the knife right here, and I could feel the point. Mm -hmm. And his, he was trying to push himself on it, but it wouldn't go in. It was just stuck there. So, you know, and then another time I tried, this was back in Lubbock, I tried to run my car over a bridge. You know, I was so wasted, and I just started, I just hit the gas and I said, you know, I just, I don't want to live. Mm -hmm. I don't want to live. So I drove, 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 and all of a sudden it's like somehow my foot just transitioned and the, I hit the brake and uh, the car just went, you know. And it's like, and I just stood there and it's like, you know, and it, I'm like shocked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What what happened? What right. happened? Why didn't this happen? Mm -hmm. Why didn't, you know, and I would cry about it. I, I don't want to live. I don't want to, I couldn't even do that right. You know, it's like, you can't do nothing right. You can't even kill yourself right. You know, it's like. I've heard that that spirit of, that spirit of suicide, that suicidal spirit is really oppressive. Oh, like it, it is. really change. like it's almost tunnel vision. It is. Mm -hmm. Like it you is. can't even think of anything else, hear right. anything else. Yeah. So the fact that God likes like protected you even in the even midst in of ways. that oppression mm -hmm. is pretty amazing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's, you hear that your grandparents are praying for you, your family's yeah. praying for you and, and like him also in a lot of different religions and whatnot, but yet, you know, God, when he has a purpose and a plan, it's like, he's there is protection over you th that's that it. you didn't even yeah. know that about you don't it even understand yeah. and it's hard to explain you know because when i got saved i got saved in the house i live in now because mm -hmm. that's where my first pastor used to be his house and that's where he started church so wow. good vibes already yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's like and every time my prayer time when i get up in the morning i'll go sit in the living room and i stare at that spot right there and sometimes i'll get back on my knees you know because that's where i felt the love of god mm -hmm. Like I've never knew, I never knew this thing existed. And it's like, I, I, it's a peace. I yeah. can sleep, you know, because I, before I couldn't sleep. It's like, I can't breathe. I can't sleep. It's like, what is this thing? So I'd get up, I'd leave. But that day that I got saved, the love that just came. And then I became a crybaby. I never used to cry. I became a crybaby <laughs> after I got saved. I was always crying and I never, why? But it's a peace I felt. Mm -hmm. You know, and my girlfriends are like, you want to go do happy hour? Mm, nah, you know, I don't feel like drinking. You know, I was drinking every day. I would go walking, but I'd buy my six pack or 12 pack, whatever I was in the mood for and drink it afterwards. But it's like when, after I got saved, it's, nah, I don't feel like it no more. Like, what's wrong with you? You know, it's yeah. like. I don't know, you know, I met God. It's like, you know. It changes right. things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. And so, you know, and it was through Joyce Meyer's ministry that I started to get a lot of healing. And she actually, she actually prayed for me one night when at one of her services. She laid hands on me and she prophesied over my life. And I received t a lot of healing. I was able to start forgiving and forgiving the people that hurt me and everything like that. So even in growing up, you know, going through life, after my ex-husband left, me and my daughter, he left me with all the debt. You know, every, I couldn't afford it. And I was, you know, uh, getting harassed and, and whatnot. I mean, taken, getting taken to, you know, um, court because, you know, I couldn't pay my debts and whatnot. And that was another moment as a Christian of, of, of wanting to commit suicide. Because, mm -hmm. again, I couldn't, you know, I was being harassed so much. It's overwhelming. Debt collectors. Mm -hmm. It was so overwhelming. Yeah. And so I'd already made a plan. I wrote the suicide note. I went to church that wow. morning. It was on a Sunday. And so I locked myself in my room. My daughter would come, Mama, you know, knocking on the door. Mom, open the door. What's wrong? And I was like, Mama, don't feel good, mija. Just, I'm okay. Just leave me alone. Pray for me or whatever you want to do. I, I just, you know. And, and, and even though at the time I didn't think about it, but I thought about it afterwards. I was being selfless because I wasn't thinking about her. I was just thinking about myself, mm -hmm. you know. But, I mean, through all that, God, you know, I mean, a phone call came through. And, and you know, people that work with debt, you know, people that are in debt and whatnot. And I'm like, how'd you get my number, you know? And I had already made the plan, 6 p.m. I'm, I'm, that's it. I'm doing it. I'm taking these pills. And I had a big, you know, jar of pills and whatnot. About 545 and my phone's ringing and it's like, 
we we help people on debt and debt, and it's like, how'd you get my number? And they're like, I don't know, ma'am, your number just appeared here. Okay. And so I'm like, well, this is my situation. You know, I'm already going to, to they're suing me. She goes, oh, well, you're already pretty deep. She says, well, we don't deal with that kind of stuff. She says, but you know what? There's somebody that works here. His name is Chris. And he's, I've heard him talk about that kind of stuff. Let me see if I can get him to call you and, and you know, give me about 15, you know, 10, 15 minutes. So we hung up. And I'm like, okay, what just happened here? You know what I mean? And I, then I thought, he's not going to call. And the minute I said that, the phone's ringing again. And it's the same number. And I looked. So I answered it. And it was that guy, Chris. So he started walking me through. He's like, you know, well, do you have a lawyer? No, I can't afford, afford a lawyer. You know, he's like, okay, well, you have a computer. You know, because they were already threatening to take my house and sure. garnish my wages mm -hmm. and whatnot. And he says, no, in the state of Texas, they cannot do that. And not only that. The IRS is the one that's allowed to do certain things. They're trying to put fear in you. Yeah. Is what their their mm -hmm. their job is. So and so okay. So I mean, and he, you know, you had a computer. Yes. Okay. Open it up. And and then he walked me through. I mean, he stayed on the phone for almost two hours with me, walking me. I was taking notes. Okay. When you go to court, you got to take this, 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 this. Blah blah blah. So okay, okay, Lord, okay, uh, okay. So it was like. By that time, it's already going to be 8 o'clock. You know, it's like, ooh, I passed my time for suicide. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, wow. I missed that one. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. So, anyway, you know, the court date came up, and I remember um, it was going to be on a Friday. So, the Wednesday prior to that, um, I got up, I was praying, and the Lord told me, sit there, I'm putting a spirit of David on you, and I'm going to give you strategy, what you got to do. And he told me how to pray. He started talking to me. He said, don't write any notes, you know. And he says, I just want you to listen to me. So he told me what to do, what I was mm -hmm. going to see when I walked in there, what to lay hands on. And I mean, it was just amazing mm -hmm. in, in the way God did all that. So, okay, so I got to court. I walked in there, and sure enough, what he told me, there it was. I laid hands. I started praying. I praying in the spirit. And then, you know, and I remember that day was raining, raining, raining. So anyway, the courtroom opened. I, I walked in there, had to check in with the bailiff and whatnot. And all these lawyers and people were walking mm -hmm. in and whatnot. So um, I remember it was about 930 that morning. My time was going to be at 945. I was set, you know, and, it, and like I said, it was raining like crazy. And then the bailiff, the phone rang and she answered the phone and then she turned and looked at me and, and she just turned back. She went and talked to the judge. So the judge says, um, I know it's raining a lot outside. People are running late. You do not leave my courtroom unless I dismiss you, you know, even if your court time comes up. So I knew they were talking about me because everybody was walking in with a lawyer, you know, two, mm -hmm. three people at a time. I was the only single person there. So um, finally, right at about 945 or so, this man walks in. He looked like he was coming off the streets. He had a briefcase. That was your lawyer? Well, see, he walked in like that, and he went and checked in with the bailiff, and then she pointed me out. So he came and sat next to me. He stunk like beer, like he had just came out of a bar. He looked like a bum, to be very honest with you. And he was the one. It was American Express that was uh, suing me. So he told me he was representing American Express. And he was just like, just kind of with his words mumbling mm -hmm. and whatever. And then he's like, um, I have to put a hold on th in this case. And, and I'm looking at, I said, what are you talking about? I mean, I didn't, you know, he's like, uh, there, there's a, there's a discrepancy. I said, what does that mean? I mean, what are you talking yeah. about? You know? And he, and so the judge called us up there. So we went up there and then the judge looking at me and he's like, where's your lawyer? Who's representing you? And I said, um, I'm by myself. And then he's just looking at me like, mad so you know he starts reading our whatever he does then all the legal mm -hmm. stuff and so the lawyer he told him he told him i need to put a hold on this case because of the discrepancy that we're not in agreement of of what the final total do and he was just going on and yeah. the judge is just looking at him like you know what's going on here anyway right. so he with his gavel he just hit the thing really hard and he says this you know this this um um court case is on hold for two months and then he looked at me he says don't ever walk into my courtroom without a lawyer he says because i guarantee you if he would not have done that you would have lost this case that's what the way he told me but inside the holy spirit says i am your advocate i just heard it that's i good. mean i was just yeah. rising mm -hmm. you know i was just like and so anyway we went and sat down he sat there he pulled out his business card he gave it to me and he says just call my office whatever you think you owe 
just pay us 20% and I'm done with this. And I'm looking at him like, what? So anyway, and he got up and he just walked out and he left me with his business card. So I'm just, I'm just sitting there trying to process all this yeah, stuff yeah. that just happened. I went out, I sat in my car and I'm sitting there and I'm thinking over all of this, I was going to kill myself, mm -hmm. you know, over this. And, and it's like, when I drove off, I saw a marquee that said, your debt is paid in full. That's what it said. And I'm looking at it. I mean, I just got God. I just got joy. I yeah. just got all this coming all over me. And I'm like, okay, Lord. And so, you know, a couple of months passed. And then I got a letter in the mail from the specific judge. And he's like, you know, the this case has been dismissed. And these, these lawyers, because I kept calling him. I would call that man, you know, and he was never in the office. His secretary kept, kept telling me, just call back next week. Just call back. I kept calling, and he would never, and he would not call me back. I said, well, I'm leaving a message. You know, this mm -hmm. is, you know, mm -hmm. he never called me back. And so, like I said, I got that letter, and the judge, it said, you know, your case is dismissed. And they can no longer, that particular, uh, you know, can no longer sue you. Wow. <laughs> so I'm sitting here like, you know, so I decided to call back to the the number that had called me. And so I'm like, uh, yeah, you know, this is so and so. And they're like, OK, and how can we help you? And, I'm, you know, I said, well, I'd like to talk to Chris. Chris. Uh, yeah, I like I need to talk to Chris. And they're like, we don't have a Chris that works here. What? I said, OK, um, well, I got a call and I started explaining on a Sunday. And I said, OK, well, ma'am, we don't make calls on Sundays because we don't work on Sundays. Oh we only goodness. work. What in the world? Friday. And so and they said, and we've not we've not had a Chris that works here. And I'm like, so I hung Ooh, up the phone. I got goosebumps. I <laughs> you can imagine. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, my God, you know, and that. That was the restoration and the protection yeah. of God on my life. And I, you know, in the middle of me wanting to do this. Yes. So, you know, and now this thing wasn't over. After a while, I got another letter in the mail. This other uh, lawyers wanted to sue me for the same situation. But see, by this time, I already knew my rights. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. So yeah. this time, yeah. I, yeah. I said, I grabbed my papers from that judge and I grabbed everything. And I just went straight into that lawyer's office. And I said, and I laid it down, and I said, I got this letter mm -hmm. from y'all. I said, you cannot sue me no more. I mm -hmm. said, this has been done. I said, and plus so many years has already mm -hmm. passed. Yeah. Right. I said, I'm, and then he looked at me, and he just he just gave me everything back. He goes, you're right. He said, you've been doing your homework. You're right. Okay. We're done. So that was it. That was done. It's incredible. What an incredible story. And what I love about it is that, that like, you were ready to kill yourself over mm -hmm. this debt situation. Like you, like the enemy is such a liar. Yes, right. Uh, like he just made a whole cloud around yes. that whole situation that made you think this was put this was fear it. in you. Mm -hmm. But look mm -hmm. what God did. Yeah, that's incredible. Absolutely, and you know, and even in the year that he started talking to me about getting out of my debts, I owed a school loan. I had a visa, big old visa bill, mm -hmm. and then my mortgage, my home mortgage. So um, he started to give me strategy, and he told me, "I want you out of debt." This next year, this was in 2017. So in 2018, he wanted me out of debt. So I'm like, okay, how am I going to do that? It's like, you know, mm -hmm. like God doesn't yeah. know. Like, you know, yeah. it's right, like, right. You, you know how much money I make, you know, and yes. I, I still owe this big old school loan and whatnot. Okay, so this is what I want you to do. In three months, I want you to pay such and such for your school loan, but you're going to pray that the payments are doubled and tripled. You know I mean? He gave me strategy, right? And, okay, but I said, okay, Lord, but. You know, if you look at these numbers, that doesn't add up to the final amount here. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, don't question God. Yeah, just right. do it. Right. Right? <laughs> I did it. And next thing you know, boy, I got, okay, your debt's paid in full. I said, what? Woo, glory to God. <laughs> Woo, you know, it's like, okay, three more months, six yes. months. Right. You're going to put that into that, your visa bill. I said, okay, Lord, so I'm going to do it. So I did it. Six months, the visa's gone. Woo, <laughs> man. And, you know, it's just like these weights are Get coming lifted off of you. Okay, now you got these last six months to, to pay your mortgage. Woo, that's a big one right there. You know, I still owed a, a pretty good amount. It was not going to get paid off in those six months with this amount of money. But, okay, you, you're God. You can yeah. you, you turn things around. You know, that's just God altogether. And exactly, I mean, six months. Now, I did cheat a little bit because Christmas came up, so I need some of this money for Christmas presents. But 
two weeks into 2018, you know, or the next year, rather, 2019, you know, right. I was, I was like, I was debt free. That's amazing. I said, Lord, man, that was. You said 2019. Thing. That was back in. Uh, he started talking to me in 2017, 2018. Yeah, 2019. And then, and then that's your when husband he, comes around. Then husband after comes around. was released, that's the year he got released. You know, so it was like God. Would you look at God? Was just releasing and preparing. Yeah. I told Arnold, I said, you know, when I be, this is my belief. I said, you know, when when God was protecting him, I said God was protecting you to to uh, because he's like. I have this woman named Dolores. You need to be over there for her to help her out. Yeah. <laughs> Get her a little bit straight. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. You know, and, and like Pastor Justin, Pastor Annette, I love them so much, you know, because it's like I watched them throughout the years. And I watched yeah. Pastor Justin, you know, because I'd been here from way back when. And I came from a church kind of, you know, similar and whatnot. But when I saw him, you know, have to go uh, away for a little bit, and I said, he ain't coming back. He's not coming back. See, that was my mentality. Mm -hmm. Because my dad left, he didn't come back. I had other people in my life left, they didn't come back. My first pastor, he left, he didn't come back. You know? And so I said, he ain't coming back. He ain't coming back. But when he came back, he came back so strong. So I, I was watching. Mm -hmm. I was seeing, and I was watching, and I said, oh, he's my pastor that came back. <laughs> he's the man that came back in my life, you know, and, and, and the first, you know. And, and then my, the, the Lord restored my relationship with my dad. You know, me and my dad were just like, ooh, I hated him. But it's God restored, and then God gave me the opportunity to lead him to the Lord. It's amazing. And now is to see him flourish and grow and develop and how the word is working in his life, yeah. personal life. You know, it's like, wow. And he loves, loves Arnold. You know, it's like Arnold and him just like, they, they just like, you know, that's amazing. Like, you know, but it's like just to see what God has yeah. done. And I love hearing the people, people's stories. I love hearing. It's like the word is just like, Ooh, it's awesome. Yeah. It's God is good. It's so, I mean, <clears throat> I feel like, this is kind of an obvious, I mean, I'm going to ask the question because we ask it every episode, <laughs> but I mean, you're obviously winning in life, but we want to hear your answer. How are you winning in life? Do you think? Well, I look at it like that. And Dr. Seville teaches us don't quit. is not an option, mm -hmm. you know, and, and there is hope even in the most hopeless situations, because I know that even as women, our minds tend to Take us, you know, and I, I asked the Lord, I don't want to be an emotional roller coaster, right? And, and but to watch that word break through, mm -hmm. you know, and to let people know, you know what? It's doable. Yeah. You can do it. You can get through. Don't lose hope. And making, being a winner is, is like, let the word, let the praise, let, let, I mean, even just getting up in the morning, just, you know, God, thank you. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Thank you. You know, because it, it takes a lot just to do that. Yeah. Just to do that. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time to get there. But you know what? I'm here. You can do it. We are so glad you're here. <laughs> yes, thank you. Well, thank you so much. That was so good. I oh, still have goosebumps. That was great. Too. Well, I hope you all enjoyed it. And come back next week for more winning conversations. <laughs>